morning, fish heads. It's Christmas morning. I'm out here to get some bait. I am, yeah. So, it's a pretty glorious morning. It is bloody freezing. It's about minus two. On the way down here, it hit minus five. So we're going to get started now. Today, <clears throat> today's video is going to be about pumping lugworm. So first of all, you can see down the end there, you tighten up. You get this right. Tighten up the nut on the end of it. So you get the desired, that's too tight, tension you want. If you're new to pumping lugworm, and a lot of people are, when you buy these pumps at first, they come with a butterfly nut on the end. Change that immediately. When you dig it into the ground, it constantly changes the suction on the pump. And if, you, if you've had failed missions in the past, that's the reason why. Apart from that, there's no reason why you shouldn't be getting worms of any type, black, blow, whatever. Doesn't matter. That was your problem. That nut on the end, that's it. And apart from that, it's just technique. And that's the easy bit. <coughs> Cooking oil, not washing up liquid. Please don't use washing up liquid. We like the environment. We like the fish. We like the bait. Use washing up liquid, you kill everything off. Just a wee drop in there, you're grand. We let that sink down. Just give it a wee thing. So now we're going to check it. We're going to check the suction. So you want enough there where you can feel the suck on your hand like that and it'll go back down easily. And once it makes that noise, you're golden. So that's the first step for pumping lugworm. Whether there's any down there or not is another story. If I was a lugworm, I'd be a long way away from here. But anyway, we get started. So we head on down. Oh, it's freezing. I can see some lug. Part of the estuary, the water's actually frozen, so we'll have to wait and see what the story is. This sand here is frozen, I'm walking on as well. Rock hard. Yeah, so is that. <laughs> Isn't it a failed mission? Now, this seems to be okay, though. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> I'm kidding you not, look. Ice. Right? Do we get lugworm? Let's see. This one I got me studded boots on, that's all I can say. You wouldn't want to fall over down here anyway. Cold and wet, <laughs> for sure. So we got some worms. I'm running out of frozen bait, so I gotta get me ass in gear. The freeze is coming, it's very late this year, but it's coming nonetheless. Stick that in there. Get some water in this bad boy. I use two buckets. Uh, in the summer, you can put, uh, it insulates the other ones from the heat. In the winter, it insulates things from the cold. And also, if you kill worms, you can go to them and throw them in the other one, in the one below, and then it doesn't kill the ones above. So we whack that in there. I just pull this handle up over like that, so I don't have to bend down constantly, pick up the handle. There's his cast there, right? This isn't a big worm, so. There's his cast there, and there's his blowhole there. I suppose that's where they get their names from. Anyway, so you go in at a slight angle. There is nothing to this. If you're not getting worms, it's because they're not there. It's too hot, whatever. But it's not difficult to do. That's the angle there, right? No problem. That's vertical. Down to that angle there, you're good. So you push it in a little bit, about that far. I'd say it'd be about seven centimeters. Then you just draw the pump back, sometimes slowly, sometimes fast, depending on the ground. This guy here. Hey, anyway, I think we got that one. There he is there, look. Now, that's what I was saying. Got them, if you've bust them. You can still use that worm, perfectly good. Then I throw that down the side there. We're done. So that's 
worm number one. Try this fella. You have to remember that they don't like it when it's too hot. Then most likely they don't like it when it's too cold either. And today is definitely that one. Sometimes it can be hard to tell which hole belongs to which one. But this is quite a big worm and that's quite a big hole. So I'm gonna go with this guy belonging to that guy. So give it a shot there. I think I might get this one actually. There you go. So there he is there. Nice lugworm. Nice lugworm there. Decent bait that one. Cod or whatever. It's a bit, little bit big for flatfish. That's the type I freeze actually that one. So get him in the bucket. I have a unit counter I put around my neck when I'm pumping lug generally. So I know how many I've got. So when I, I know I can quit or whatever. So I don't have to count them in the bucket or estimate. I generally know how much bait I'm gonna use in a session. So it's pretty handy to know what the story is there. Let's get it out now and show it to you. Not that, Jesus lads. <laughs> anyway, so there it is there. That's just you and the counter. I'm gonna set that now. Now, we've got one in the bucket. Bam, that's the one now. That's it. That's under me top now, so I keep the sand out of it. I got a digital one winging its way to me in the post. Pumping lug is a lot less effort than digging lug. That's one thing I've learned over the years. As a young guy, I used to do it for extra money in that. But as you get older, digging a thousand worms a tide isn't something you can keep up for much longer unless you do it forever and ever, I suppose. Especially not down here, the sand's really wet here. Making it even more difficult. Not sure about these ones, so I'm just going to leave them. If you're not sure who belongs to what, just leave it because it's just wasted energy. Get this guy. There you go, first one. You can tell the if you're going to get them on the first suck or not. It goes, it sounds like the tie going or the, the sink empty and goes like that. Then you know you got them. Oh, there's a nice one. It's a real good one. Now, this worm, if I can get it out, will be that length between there and there, almost. Sometimes not, but sometimes when they're big, they can be almost that long here. You get some real monsters. Like black log type monsters. And that didn't go in far enough. Hit a rock. Now, the, the pump is starting to draw air. That's a good sign that you need to put some more lubricant in it. <clears throat> you don't need anything more than this for a session. I've had this bottle now for a few sessions. Just filled it up. A little tiny bottle. It's grand. You don't want to be humping around a giant bottle of washing up liquid or whatever. It's ridiculous. That's all you need. <laughs> we take this fella here, look. That's a nice one. I'll probably get this lad now. One more, because he's a nice one. Well, they're all pretty nice. I'll give him one more. <laughs> nope. Three or four, that's it. I wouldn't do any more, really. Unless you hear that sucky noise at the beginning of it. Sometimes the pump just misses them a little bit. You have to go back a few times. There you go. Another one. They're pretty decent lug, these actually. Get this lot in there. Oh, shit, we don't know who that is. We'll go with this fella because that one's smaller. Yeah, there you go. That's the, the noise I'm talking about, lads. 
There he is. <coughs> nice one. Of course, it's good to have some in between ones sometimes as well. These worms are just too big for flat fish, so generally I'll just freeze them, gut them, and freeze them. But that's a video for another time. Nice, a nice one there into the bucket. So that's basically how the pumping goes, anyway. Like I said, if you're not getting them and you're doing what I'm, what I'm doing, it's not because you're doing it wrong. It's just because sometimes it's just the worms are just too deep or they, you're missing them a little bit or the weather's crap or whatever, you know? As simple as that. And also sometimes there might not even be a worm in there at all. It could have died, been pulled out by a bird or whatever. This isn't an estuary. There's no, not any waves here very, very often. So uh, there's not much wave to wash away the cast. So sometimes the casts are completely empty. And uh, you don't know what the, what the crack is there at all. There you go. That was that sucking noise I was telling you about. Lovely job. And this is how easy it is to pump lug anyway. Uh, blow lug. Black lug is exactly the same as this. Except instead of doing this one, you just come in here at this side, same angle, round about that far, round about, you know. And uh, you do two or three. If you don't get them, move on. That's it. No different. Blow lug's a little bit easier because you have a starting point. Well, for beginners anyway. Like I said, the other one's exactly the same. Yeah. There you go. Just a matter of time. Once you hear that suck noise, you're good. Generally. Sometimes you will miss it though. Uh, where are we? This fella over here looks good. So, if you were a, a novice, which one would you pick? Does that one belong to this one? Or does this one belong to that one? This is a good one. I will leave them alone because I don't have any idea. They're all about the same, so. This could be a long, thin worm. Or it could be a medium one. Or this could be a small one. Right. We'll go, I'll just do it for the crack. I would say it's this lad's hole here. And that one belongs to this one. I think this one's more substantial. I think it's one of the orange ones. And it's just long and thin. I was right. Except I can't get them out. There you go. That's well, not an orange one, but I was right about the hole anyway. There you go. Another one for the bucket. The best times to pump or dig worms, doesn't matter, it's all the same, is when there's not much light or it's overcast and it's cool. In the middle of the day and it's hot, forget about it. You'll be down there for a couple of hours, you'll get 20 if you're lucky. Right, so either his or his. That's his there, so we'll take this guy first. It's good to, if you find a few worms together, find the holes and pick which way are you going to dig them? If you stand on the ground, they've got hairs that stick out into the sand and they can feel the vibrations. Obviously, if, if you walk close to them, they won't feel it, but if you stand on top of them, they will feel it and they'll be off. <laughs> there you go. Will I get him? Will I get him? Holy hell. There's three pumps now. Still haven't got him. This is going to be a nice worm, so I'm going to. There you go. As I was saying, fairly decent one there. But the rest of it like that as well. So the next one, which is this one here. Yeah, we got him. <laughs> nice. I'm gonna stop now for a second. Put some oil in the pump. I have everything here in a kind of worming top I made out of an L century top. I made a pouch in the top. So just keep all your gear in there. 
Look at this. Is there anything better to be doing Christmas morning? Well, probably. But this is what I'm doing. Look at that. Is that not just a beautiful thing? Look at it. Nice. <laughs> no. Nope. Anyway, there's something else that I forgot to say about when you pump. And uh, it's about the the oil hole on the top of it there. If you pull the plunger inside too close to that, you will lose suction. The pump will stop working and you won't get the worm. So don't pull it all the way till the end till it stops. You kind of get a, an idea of how far you can pull it. And it's generally about three quarters of the way. You'll feel the suction leave the pump. Look at this ladder. Some bell suction. It could also be, oh shit, I didn't see him there. Oh well, let's see if we can get him out anyway. I'll put the pump in on top of him. I think there he is there, see I cut his tail. But he's still good though. Still good even though the tail's gone. If the head's damaged, throw it in the bottom of the other bucket. Because he'll bleed all over the place and kill the rest of the worms. There's also another benefit to pumping the lug is when you use a fork or whatever, when you go to pull them out of the sound, sand, you squeeze that worm really tight and you get more dead loss. I don't know if I said this, but I'll say it one more time. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> if you're pumping in loose sand, pump slowly. If you're pumping in dense, thick sand, you have to pump fast and hard. I mean, sometimes really hard. If you pump, really hard and loose sand you just bust the worms just pop the head out them every time and in this type of sand here like it's really dense and everything else you have to pump really hard to get that worm to come out since it is christmas i'd like to wish all my subscribers and anybody else who sees this video a merry christmas from cape cod to australia england ireland Denmark, Norway, wherever you are, Merry Christmas. So there we have them there. Nice big lugworm. Nice big ones. For cod, I just put one on them and a bit of squid or a bit of mackerel or whatever. I've got about 50 now. That will do me. The tide's coming in now. So I'd only get five, ten more, so I'm not gonna bother. I got plenty of bait to fish with anyway. This is Billy Fishing. Hope you enjoyed watching. I've got worms, because I suck. Nice. Fish on, brothers, and I'll see you on the beach. Bye.